JP Tech. We are messing around with a couple things today. We are looking at, this will be coming in a future video. I just want to let you guys know I had it. And if you have questions about what you want to see, this is the MSI GTX 1060. This is only the three gigabyte model. Video cards are pretty expensive right now. I've actually been playing with this card for a couple weeks now. Managed to get it on sale for less than $300. Um, usually the six gigs have been going for more. I have seen six gig models going for about 300 on, on special sales. Otherwise they've been about 350 and above. But I just want to let you guys know that I have a three gig 1060 and we can do some tests for you guys. So guys, look, I know I got another NVIDIA card. It's a 1060. The reason I did that was because of the price. I paid about $270 for it. I wanted to put that video card in my Ryzen system so that I could always have that system running now. I really wanted to get an AMD video card, but as you know, AM, not just AMD, but video cards in general are very high and AMD happens to be very good at mining crypto. So with that being said, a RX 570 was a, a good bit more than what I paid for this three gig GTX 1060. I really wanted to get a six gig model if I was gonna get a 1060, but at the time I purchased this, the closest six gig model was about $90 more. And that's just not what I'm willing to spend on a 1060. I didn't, for my use anyways, I didn't figure the extra three gigs of video memory would be the ticket. Now, if, if this is your only video card, the extra memory might be better and I'm gonna cover some of that. But really disappointed I didn't get an AMD video card. I haven't used one for myself in a long time. Was really hoping to get a Vega 56, but they're just unreachable right now, or at least not what I'm willing to spend on them right now. I was hoping that maybe I could go down to, you know, Polaris video cards and get an RX 580 or 570, but like I said, those are way too expensive as well. I'm just not paying, you know, $400 or even more for an RX 580. So without talking too much about the video card, I just want to know what you guys want to see me do with the 1060 and uh, I'll see how I can help. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about what this video is actually going to cover. So this is kind of a little bonus thing we're going to throw in here and try out while we're at it. But right here we have a Kingston 128 gig M.2 drive that I've had for a while. It came out of my 2014 MSI GS60 Ghost laptop. I finally got around to switching to a 500 gig M.2 drive. But I was talking to a buddy of mine and, and he was needing a little bit of extra solid state storage for games and whatnot you know it's it's pretty easy to fill things up these days so i'm like hey you know it's not much but i got a 128 i can send your way you know and i asked him do you have a an m.2 slot available and he said no and i said hey man no problem i got you covered there too so what we're looking at right here is an m.2 to two and a half inch drive sata enclosure I'll show you right here. I pulled it up on the website. I've actually had this on hand for a little while now. It goes for about $9 on Newegg. And it, it took a while to get here because as you can see, it's a first from Asia international seller. It took a while to come in. But yeah, so you, you guys, you don't have to, you don't have to get something like this one in particular. This one is kind of cheap, but I have a feeling it's going to do the job. You know, you can spend up to like $40 or more on, on something like this. So anyways, my buddy has one M.2 slot on his motherboard, and that is currently being used by an M.2 already. So this is where this device comes in. This is going to allow him to hook this drive up as if it was just a 2.5 inch SATA drive. And this comes into play just because it's something I bought that I've been looking to play with recently. And this is, this is a 2.5 inch drive enclosure it uh it's usb 3.1 just aluminum enclosure i think i paid about 20 dollars for this thing but i want to see how it performs with this little 128 solid state then i have some things i need to delete off here before i send it to my buddy so let's go ahead and 
and dig in and see what we're looking at here. All right, guys. We're gonna open up our enclosure here. Got our little bag of hardware. It's a pretty straightforward process here. Nothing too hard about it. Take this little guy. Actually, we're gonna set this down. Have our little screw. I think this is already on. Yeah. So this is a I was looking to see if it's set on here, but this is an 80 millimeter, and, and I believe that's as big as this goes. I think it's already set for 80 millimeter. You just put that in there, kind of sits on an angle. Same process that you would use to do this on a motherboard or a laptop or anything else that uses M.2. Okay, nice and snug, not overly tight. I mean, that's it, guys. So, technically, I could use this as it is, but I'm going to go ahead and assemble the structure, or the enclosure, I should say. That's all there's to it. Pretty simple little board. has an M.2 slot on it. I would not recommend using something like this for NVMe drives because this is using the SATA interface, and you're not going to really gain much there. You know, maybe on maybe on IOPS, but you're definitely going to have a, a throughput issue using a SATA interface. So now that we have the M.2 secured on the adapter board, we're going to flip this over. here on the bottom. Yeah, this this product is it's a little rough around the edges. But I mean I think if you just need a basic little M.2 to SATA enclosure, even if you need it just for like the ability to you know, take an M.2 out of another system and and use it for whatever in another system that doesn't have M.2. I think this is a great option. This is what I originally got this for. You know, initially I, I wanted it to be a little bit better quality, but I don't think that I don't think the quality is much of an issue here. Okay, it looks like it looks like we get one extra screw. Well, that's it, guys. That's all there is to putting this into a SATA enclosure. Like I said, this one in particular is about eight bucks. I think you can find them, or nine bucks, excuse me. I think you can find them a little bit cheaper and you can certainly find them more expensive, but this is about as bargain as it gets for the most part. This is, uh, I mean, has like some fraying on the board. You know, it's certainly cheap, but I think it's gonna do the job. So what we have here is the Vantech Nexstar 3.1. This is a two and a half inch SATA six gigs to USB 3.1. It uses Gen 2 Type A. Bought this for about twenty dollars, I believe it was. I want to run an SSD in a portable enclosure pretty soon. I think I'm going to start running my Steam games and stuff like that on a drive like this so when I'm testing on the different systems I can just you know go back and forth and I'm not filling up solid states not too much of an issue right now but something I certainly want to give a try so this is a pretty basic enclosure this is made out of aluminum the only thing I'm not liking about it is it's rough around the edges and you probably want to be careful it's certainly sharp they could have taken the time to grind these edges down a little bit round them off 
but that makes it it's probably going to cause more damage to things. No rubber feet. I would have liked to have seen some rubber feet on the bottom. Something you can certainly go to your local, you know, hardware store or supermarket or something and, and get some little rubber standoffs. But I think it'd be nice to give it some grip on the surface that it's on instead of letting it slide around. Anyways, we're going to take our custom M.2 to SATA enclosure, two and a half inch. We're just going to... So that's that. The drive is now in there. Another thing I'm kind of curious about too with this being plastic is that thermals might potentially be an issue. I feel like if it was metal it would allow heat transfer better. Especially with this being an aluminum enclosure. Oops, did this backwards. Okay, so this goes in here. There's actually a little notch right here. Let me get this. You know, if you're using this thing long term, you might want to use these four screw holes. At least the options there. I think that it's it's pretty securely in place in there, especially once you slide it into the actual enclosure itself. I think that that should be pretty good. So there's two there's two screw holes on each side of this. I'm gonna take these smaller screws little black screws okay so one tightened now I just want to note too that if you're trying to get an enclosure for an M.2 you don't have to use this process this might be useful if you want to use this for different purposes you, that way you can use a two and a half inch drive in here or you can use that enclosure that I used to put an M.2 in the same enclosure but otherwise, if you know that you just want to use, there goes that screw. Otherwise, if you know that you just want to use an external enclosure for strictly M.2s, you might want to get a different enclosure. And they, there's so many different options on the market currently. All right, guys. So plugged the external enclosure with the two and a half inch. SATA to M.2 converter case, plugged it all in, everything's working good, it pulled up the, the drive on Windows, no problem, has a bunch of stuff on it because it is the OS drive out of my laptop. Alright guys, so just wrapping up this coverage on the uh, Vantec drive here and the little cheapo two and a half inch SATA to M.2 enclosure. This this product ended up being pretty good. It worked as advertised. It was cheap. The structure is pretty strong. The only thing I'm not liking on this though is the lack of no feet. So it can just, it can just slide around on slippery surfaces. Not really liking that. And it comes with a USB cable, which is nice. It has a little LED indicator light to let you know that it's powered on and it's working. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty basic little device that does its job. I had no issues with installing the M.2 drive into the two and a half inch enclosure and then putting that enclosure into this external SATA enclosure as soon as I plugged it into my computer on a USB port it worked as advertised the drive came up right away I got about 340 megabytes a second on video file transfer you know just a quick test I know it uses up some writes but no big deal so the only thing that I like I said I didn't like about it is it has rough edges like this is pointed and this is it's pretty sharp and it's not really I don't know why they couldn't just grind this down and make it smoother that would have been more appealing to me anyways and I feel that you have to be kind of careful with this so that like if I drop this on my desk I'm gonna put some dents in it or something you know even even just 
kind of moving around, you gotta be careful that you don't scratch things with it. Otherwise it's smooth on, on the rest of the corners. And I think that some rubber feet would certainly help it out. But yeah, not too much to say about that. Not, not too much bad to say about it either. It does what it needs to do. So if you're looking for a, a cheap enclosure to throw a solid state in, this one does the job very well for $20. And like I say, if you're trying to use something just for an M.2, don't even, I wouldn't necessarily do this route unless you want the flexibility of, of going two and a half inch SATA drive or M.2. And that's as far as using the M.2 to SATA case that I had used. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the quick video today on the Vantec enclosure, the name I can't remember, M.2 to SATA enclosure. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see on that GTX 1060. And I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit subscribe and come back for more JP Tech. See you guys.